Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sun. Today we're going to be doing some AP Physics 1 and we're going to just do an introduction on gravity, but not necessarily gravity when it's always on Earth, but gravity on like different planets or just anything. All right, so something that's important for gravity is it's dependent, the gravitational force is dependent on a few things. First thing it's dependent on is how big are each of these two objects? All right, and then how far away are they? So like the, uh, the sun is really, 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 really big. So it has a lot of gravitational force behind it. It has a lot of gravity that would actually deal with, but if it's interacting with us, which one actually is having more effect on us? Because are we closer to the sun or are we closer to earth? All right. Um, so the distance between them matters and it's inversely proportional to distance, which is why we have divided by R squared here. And then the masses of each object are here. Now this big G stands for the normal, excuse me, the universal gravitational constant, which is six point, zoom in a little bit to that, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th power. Take notice of that number. Um, a lot of times you think gravity is this huge, overwhelming, powerful force, but um, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th power is a really, really small number, okay? It, it, it actually has very little impact um, compared to some of the other forces uh, like um, a, atomic strong force and things like that because um, magnetism even breaks gravity. Anywho, getting off on a tangent here. So gravity is a small number in general, like in terms of forces. So um, the, the thing you need to be aware of is mass is the amount of matter only a property of the object, whereas weight, you a lot of times think of as mass, is the measurement of the pull of gravity on said object, and it is kind of dependent on where you're located. On Earth, you may have a mass of uh, 63.5 kilograms, and on the moon, you would still have a mass of 63.5 kilograms, but your weight would be 103 newtons on the moon, but your weight on the Earth, because the Earth is much bigger, would be 623 newtons. So there'd be 23 pounds on the moon, but you'd be 140 pounds here on Earth. All right, so that tells you something that also relates to it. It is proportional to essentially how big of each mass you are. You would be the same mass, but the moon compared to the Earth would indicate the force due to gravity on Earth is more. All right. Um, Let's do a problem. Let's do a problem. We're going to start with some easy problems here. So let's say that for G in terms of mass on Earth and let's say that what is the acceleration due to gravity 400 kilometers above the Earth? Okay, so a lot of these problems try and trick you. This first video I'm doing is going to be the basic problems where it's just plug it into the formula. So the formula would be G times the, the difference between the masses divided by the radius squared. All right, so what is the acceleration of the bit above the height of the space? So Earth has a mass of 5.97 times 10 to the 24th power and a radius of 6.4 times 10 to the 6th. So we have included here the weight of Earth. We have included here the gravitational constant you may, may be asking, what about the other object? Well, to be honest with you, it doesn't matter that much because how big is anything compared to Earth? And the answer is that is so insignificant. So we didn't even include that. Normally it's M1 times M2. Well, when you're talking about really, really, really big objects, you don't really care too much about it, all right? So we don't have that second one, but we do have something very important here that a lot of students forget. This R squared, you have the radius of the Earth, 6.4 times 10 to the 6, and then you have to add how far away you are from that radius, okay? So that's what we have here, the 400 kilometers above the earth. 
So you, if you're standing on the Earth, it'd be just the 6.4 times 10 to the 6. Because you're above the Earth, the International Space Station, I believe we're talking about, would be a, a 400 above that. All right, a lot of times students forget that. All right, if you calculate all of that, either type it in your calculator or get really, really good uh, at just using scientific notation, you would get gravity is equal to 8.6 meters per second squared. All right, well, what is gravity typically? Well, gravity typically is roughly 10, or you could say even more specifically 9.8. Well, and if you did 8.6 divided by 9.8, you'd get 87% of Earth's gravity. So even the International Space Station experiences quite a bit of Earth's gravity, which makes uh, a lot of us confused, which we're going to get into in a different video, as why in the world do they still experience 87% of gravity, but everything over there is floating in, the, in whenever you're in outer space in the, in the space shuttle and in, inter, in the International Space Station. Well, it comes to, eh, maybe we'll do it in this video. It's not going to be a perfect explanation. The picture is super blurry. You're going down. And when you're going down, the International Space Station goes down. But the International Space Station is spinning around so fast to the left or to the right around Earth that the amount of, uh, it's gone this far to the left, and then it's gone down that same, like, a distance, and that just mimicked the curvature of the Earth. So essentially, as they're going so far, imagine as the Earth curves, they're falling. But because they're going this away so fast, the amount that they fell just matched the curvature of the Earth. So it actually looks like they're just permanently spinning around the Earth. And it feels to them like they're weightless, even though they're experiencing 87% of the gravity. They're still falling. They're falling 87% of the speed, 8.6 meters per second squared. And if they moved a little further from Earth, then they would actually move, you know, experience even less of this. But because they're going around the Earth so fast in the International Space Station, they're in permanent free fall, which gives them this, this sense of being like having no weight because they're perfect, perfectly in free fall. It's not because there's no gravity. It's, there is less gravity because they are further away from Earth but they're still experiencing free fall, which gives them the sense of no gravity, but uh, it's not the same. All right, that's going to do it for this one. Until next time, my friends, stay positive, and I will see everybody later. I would be sure, sure to check the next video because the next video is going to be talking about weird scenarios in terms of proportions. These gravity problems tend to be a little too easy, so a lot of textbook manufacturers make the problems hard for no reason. And they're like, oh, the radius is twice as big of this planet as is on this planet. And they, I, I don't know. that. Stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Bye.